This is the Samsung CU7000, and a lot of people reached out to me saying that they really enjoyed this television, but on this video, we're gonna compare it against the newer model. This is the Samsung DU7200 for 2024. And if you was to walk into a Best Buy right now, you'll see these TVs floor stacked everywhere, especially around sales events or holidays. On this video, I'm gonna show you some picture quality tests that I pre-recorded so we can take a look and see which one is the best performers because this one's gonna be on sale even cheaper this year. And I like to say that I've been holding on to this TV for a year and it's time to say goodbye. So with that being said, let's get into it. Before we get into this, I will tell you that I didn't calibrate these TVs. I'm using factory settings and we're just gonna go through some of the basics before we get into some picture comparisons. Now, I want to check out the brightness on both television. Instead of using the Calman software with this guy right here, I just actually downloaded an application on my phone so I can just check the brightness out of that. And using an all white screen with the brightness at 100%, I was able to get 963 lux out of the DU7200. And then moving over to the CU7000, I was getting 769 lux. But on some of the content, even using the same settings, the CU7000 appears to look a lot brighter. I also want to do a heat test on these televisions and it appears that the DU7200 is more consistent across the board versus the CU7000. When I was filming this demo footage, I happened to notice this right here. So I paused the scene and look at the gradient on the CU7000. Now it doesn't happen on everything that you play through it, but it's kind of weird that it's showing this pixelization on the screen compared to the DU7200, which looks a lot smoother. And when it comes to viewing angles, again, you can see that the DU7200 looks a lot better. So if you decide to mount the TV above a fireplace or up high, the DU7200 will have a much better picture as far as colors off axis. Both of these TVs are edge lit televisions, So one thing for sure, you will see backlights, especially on dark scenes. But speaking of that, let's go into movies. Now, if you're watching a movie, I will say that the CU7000 does appear to look brighter. And one thing that I noticed on the CU7000 is that I don't see the backlights as bad as the DU7200. But when it comes to color reproduction, live here in the studio, the DU7200 just appears to be a lot more accurate than the CU7000. When it comes to motion rate, expect about the same experience on it and you can customize it by going into the menu and adjusting the judder if you get that soap opera effect. And when it comes to skin tones, I think both TVs are very similar. And in my opinion, the DU7200 slightly edges out the CU7000 overall. And far as dirty screen effects, it seems like both TVs look great where they're in the white zone, but whenever we get into more of the gray level, I noticed that the CU7000 in the center of it has a little bit more dirty screen effects when you compare these two TVs. Now the buzzword going around is everything's becoming HDR. That's high dynamic range. So it allows more metadata to the television so it can produce a much better picture. When you look at this comparison right here, the biggest thing that really stands out to me is that the color reproduction, once again, on the DU7200 is picking up a lot more detail than the CU7000. So what that means, if you decide to play HDR content on it, the DU7200 is going to look much better. For people who are asking, can I get a great gaming experience out of these TVs? And I would say yes. The main reason is the majority of the games run at 4K 60 frames per second, and both of these TVs will support up to that capabilities. Both of these TVs have the auto low latency feature for faster latency, but keep in mind, neither one of these TVs will support G-Sync or FreeSync. For gaming, I think both TVs are gonna give you the same experience overall. The last thing I wanna tell you guys is that if you have a CU7000, they did update the software. So let's take a look at the menu systems real quick. So now you have these nice uh, new looks as far as the icons. And the thing I wanna show you here is that if we go through the menus, one thing that this DU7200 has that that one doesn't have is a Q-Symphony setup. So if you have a Samsung soundbar, now you have a setup to get the best experience out of it. Other than that, all the menus are about the same, 
We have the gaming settings. Both TVs will support Apple AirPlay. And you do have a new multi-control on the new DU7200. As we go through here, again, all the features look almost identical. And keep in mind, neither one of these TVs has voice commands. However, if you go with the new DU7200, you can download the SmartThings application and now you can use your mobile device to give it voice commands. The last thing we're gonna take a look at here is if we go into the main screen, now you have what they call SmartThings application. This is a new hub that's available on all the 2024 models. And basically it allows you to hook up all your smart devices and have them to talk to each other. Plus you can control lights directly from the television as well as setting up routines. And this is something that the CU7000 does not have. Now, as far as things that I did notice when I was doing my demos is that you can't see it with the naked eye, but my camera did pick out some flickering here on the DU7200. And I'm not sure if it's just the camera settings or the televisions. So if you're experiencing any type of flicker on your television, leave me a comment below. And when it comes to the CU7000, there's a thing called panel lottery. When I was testing this TV out, I noticed a white border around the edge that I didn't notice before they did the update. When it comes to making televisions, Samsung is number one as far as the most units sold. And the great thing is buying their televisions, you have a customer service rep that you could call, which some companies just don't have that set up. The last thing I wanna mention on these two TVs is that if you need fiber optic output, the DU7200 no longer has it, but who really uses that anymore? It's just a handful of people. I think the majority of people are now using eARC or they're using Bluetooth to connect their audio systems externally. With that being said, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Say goodbye to the CU7000. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel. We have some great content coming out. Thanks all for watching and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.